So 2-9 continues what we did yesterday, but yesterday all of our numbers were going to be really far from zero. So they're going to be either a number that's very positive, a big positive number, or a number that's very negative, as far away from zero, it's way to the left on a number line from zero. This new stuff is the same thing, except for now we're going to have negative exponents. So when we have 3.27 times 10 to a power, that power now is going to be a negative number. It'll be times 10 to the negative 2, times 10 to the negative 7. So we'll have a negative before that exponent number. So these numbers are all going to be numbers that look like this baby here. I probably shouldn't say that, but they're going to be numbers like this. That if you have a negative exponent, that's going to be scientific notation with negative exponents. They're for numbers that are close to 0. So close to 0. And I'm going to take this example and, and do it. Uh, if we take, I think I want to do it. Um, so where do we put our decimal point? It's, our decimal point starts out here, but if we're going to write it in that proper form that we did yesterday, decimal point's going to go yeah, between the 2 and the 4. So we end up with a 4.2. Does that look familiar to yesterday? Just our zeros were on the other side, but we always put our decimal point we did one number, and then the decimal point, and then maybe some other numbers after it. So four point, and then two, and whatever other numbers other than zero. You okay on the 4.2? Yep. Times 10. Yesterday, we counted up how many places we moved the decimal point. We do the same thing today. How many jumps do I have trying to get from here to here? Five. Five. It takes me three to the comma. One, two, three, four, five. So if we have a five... Now, this was like what our answer would look like yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. So t that would be a number that's much bigger than 0. If we want a number that's close to 0, the only difference in today's stuff is we make that a negative 5. Oh. So 4.2 times 10 to the negative 5. So I want to write down some of what we just did. So the exponent equals the number of jumps for the decimal point. So same as yesterday, we look at how many places do we move the decimal point, how many jumps do we have to do, and that's going to be what our exponent is. But now we get a positive exponent if you have a big number, and maybe I'll say positive slash negative, if it makes sense to have a big negative number, um, a negative number that's really far from zero. You have a negative exponent with a small number. Or for that, I really want to say close to zero. And I'm going to maybe do a comma and then say positive slash negative. So it could be positive or it could be negative. If I were to go through, and you can choose whether you change your, that first example or not, but if I were to take and put a negative here, that same first example but make it negative, where does that negative show up on this right-hand side? Who wants to take a gander at that? Go for it, Kyle. Yep, exactly, before the 4. We put it right there. So whether you have a negative or a positive here, it doesn't impact this positive negative, not the exponent number, just what goes in front of your, your number there. So very good, very good deduction. So. All right, should we do the scientific notation of standard, or standard notation of scientific notation? I read it backwards. So. All right, so this first one here, we want to put the decimal point between what two numbers? One, one, one and four. One. So do you write positive 1.47 or negative 1.47? Positive, because it's positive, so just 1.47 times 10. And then my exponent has to be four. negative 4. Yep. So we're close to 0, so it'll be a negative number. There's a like point and then some zeros in there. And we moved it four jumps to get from here, 1, 2, 3 to the comma, and one more to get there. So the next one is going to be a negative 2 times 10, and now we just need to figure out, well, we're, we put our decimal point after the first non-zero number, and to do that, we moved it how many places? Three. three. So times 10 to the? Third power. Negative three. So it's as close to zero, we've got to put the negative there. So this negative here just means that we have this point and then some zeros in front. Very last one in this category, we have? 4.8, I love it, times 10. Is my exponent going to be positive or negative? Negative. 
negative, so we're doing close to zero. So if you want to do the comma jumping, you have three, six, eight. You have seven and eight. So, so times 10 to the negative eight. Roman numeral two, we good? We're kicking butt and taking names. We're doing math with grace and style. We're, I don't know, we're doing something. Um, okay, I'm, I'm just wasting oxygen. I don't know what you guys are doing. Okay, uh, this next one, if we take, how many jumps do we move our decimal point? Five. Five, we do five. Are we going five to the right or five to the left? Which is gonna give us a number close to zero? Left. Yes. Left. So if we take and move it five to the left, we're gonna get something that's kind of like point zero zero zero, you know, that type of stuff. So if I'm moving it five to the left, I'm gonna end up with zero point, or maybe skip that zero, I'll maybe add that later, but how many more jumps do I need to go? How many zeros do I have to add in front of my three? Four. four. That you agree it takes me one of my five jumps to get here? Mm -hmm. Then we have four more jumps to get up to five jumps total. Mm -hmm. So I have four zeros, so point zero 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 zero. And you just copy down the other numbers, three, four, zero, nine. And I'm trying to do, this is how I always write my answers. I'm trying to copy what the book does and put like the zero in front. If you don't, that's totally fine. I'm just trying to up my, up my A game. So, okay, now for commas, we always start at the, the decimal point for commas. So our first comma, I was always taught five or more digits put in commas, but you start here, count over three. So first comma goes here not three from this side. Start the decimal point, three over is where your commas go. So comma there, and comma between the four and the zero. Just makes it a lot easier to work with. It's easier counting up zeros like on the screen. All right, this last one. Bless you. How many zeros are we gonna put in front of that two? Six, because we have seven jumps total, but one jump takes me to the front. Are we gonna have to have a negative in front or not? Yep, because yeah. it's a negative number. So you could say negative point. Then you guys said six zeros. So one, two, three. You could do your commas now if you wanted to. One, two, three, comma, four, five, six, comma, two, seven, one. And I didn't leave my space. If you want to put in the zero in front of the decimal point, great. That's what all the books do. Um, you could be as, an, as exciting as a math book just by adding a zero. That's not motivating. Okay, you guys okay on page one? Making myself laugh. Okay, um, the next part here, naming decimal places. So some of this I'm sure you've seen. If we were to talk about, I'm going to start right here with this nine. This nine here in the middle but to the left of the decimal point, that's like the ones place. The eight then would be the tens. Now, if you notice, we're not ending with a THS. It's just the S at the end. After The 7 is my hundreds. hundreds. 6 is my thousands. thousands. And now our process kind of repeats. Uh, we had this like tens and hundreds and thousands. Now we have our <laughs> ten thousands and hundred thousands and so on. So my 5 then is ten thousands. Four is hundred thousands. I'm guessing you guys learned all these before, right? Even into the millions and stuff. So three is going to be millions. And then after millions, we have ten nice ten millions. Yeah, the next group of three you jump to billions. I heard that out there too. And then hundred millions. We okay on those? Then the other side. The other side is going to have like THSs for the end of all of them or most of them or a lot of them. All of them, I think. Um, but now here's the thing. I always kind of thought it was a little bit weird that when we go on the other side, we kind of skip that ones part. And here's why. Because in my thought, if it makes sense, you're more likely to remember it. Point nine and I don't know if this is worth writing, but 0.9 is the same as 9 over... Nine. Nine, 9 over 1 is just going to be 9, but 9 over 10 is 0.9, agreed? Yeah. So when we say this problem right there, we say it's 9 tenths. tenths. 
So that's why when you're doing the right of a decimal, we skip the ones completely and we just start with tenths. Because 0.9 would be 9 tenths as a fraction. Now, once you have the tenths in place, it really just kind of like follows this pattern here. But we, instead of having a DS at the end, we end with like a THS at the end. So then if I get rid of those, so my 8 then. Nice, so hundredths. And then <coughs> 7 is going to be my 1,000. Okay, I can't say 1,000. It's spelled at the same time. H -O. And then after thousands, we have ten thousands. And hundred thousand. And now I'm down to my four. I don't know if you're ahead of me or behind me, but the four, after hundred thousandths, we have millions. Yep, put THS at the end. Then you have 10 million, or 10 millionths. Okay, focus, my friends. After 10 months, we have 100 millionths. And after 100 millions, you'd have billions. After 100 millionths, you'd have billionths. So billion with a THS. Are we okay on that? Okay. The reason for going over that, well, I guess you could argue, uh, remember the RTI test had a lot of rounding ones, and they want you to round a certain place values. If you don't know the place values, then you struggle with that there. Um, the other reason is when they give you something like, oops, I wrote these out here. Um, if Maybe I'll quick change gears. So 0.9 we said was 9 tenths. Um, 0 0.98 is 98 over 100. So that's a review of what you, in theory, know already. Um, but that's why they call 0.98, it's 98 hundredths. Oh, my bad. Forgot I don't have the very bottom of the page. So 98 hundredths. So that's why our second decimal point right here is that hundredths place. So, so tenths would be one decimal point, like 0 0.9. 0 0.98, so 0 0.98 would be hundredths, because it would be 98 hundredths. Good. <coughs> All right, this next part, I remember when I first was trying to teach out of this book a couple years ago, I was looking at this, right, 43 ten thousandths in scientific notation. It was like, what? <laughs> you know, that's really hard. To go from 43, maybe your brain does it, but to go from 43 ten thousandths to scientific notation, my brain just kind of looks at me and thinks, let's go get some candy. Um, this, is, this is what I would do if I were you. If we have, if you write it as a certain way in between, it makes it a whole lot easier. So I'm going to say decimal point. This place right here is the tenths, right? If I put a second little dash, that'd be my hundredths. Third dash would be thousands. thousands. Next one would be ten thousands. ten thousands. So do you agree if my ten thousandths is really just that spot right there? Yes? yes. So if I want to say 43 ten thousandths, what goes in my blanks? The first blank will be a zero. Second blank, Samuel, is a zero. Third blank? Four. Sam, your voice just totally changed. Um, three. And then a three. Yep. But... And a lot of times, honestly, I'll do the zeros at the end. But if you know this is ten thousandths, and you have 43 ten thousandths, you write 43 in your last two blanks. Yes? yes. Now from here, is that hard to change the scientific notation? I don't no, think so. Because that's going to be anyone? 4.3, beautiful, times? Negative three. Because just the three. Because we're going from here to here. That's one jump, two jumps, three jumps. One, two, three. Because the zeros are in front, so number close to zero will be a negative three. So we're still a little shaky, but hey, you just learned it. The next one, 
five millionths in scientific notation. So one dash is going to be tenths, then, then, then ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, millionths. So in my last blank, I write five. five. So it's just one number, five millionths. And that's one of my zeros. So the rest are all zeros. So in scientific notation, we would write point. Ooh, always one number before the decimal, so five times. So we need to do a decimal points right there. Negative six. Because three jumps to get to this comma, another three jumps to get there. Negative six. And the negative is because it's a number that's close to zero. Feel okay?